Good morning. Welcome to East Tucson Baptist Church. I'm Carl, and this is our prayer and reflection time. Yesterday was the 20th anniversary of the September 11th attacks. You know, it's a day that I think everybody will, who was there will remember. I remember where I was that day when, you know, I saw the second tower get hit and all the other stuff that was going on that day watching it all play out live on broadcast TV all day long. And the thing is, I think it struck the American people. It hit us in a place that we thought, we realized that we were mortal, that we could be struck down in an instant. And so it led to this kind of awakening, this revival. People were seeking something spiritual. And so the churches the next Sunday were busier than usual. You know, these crises remind me of a familiar verse, Jeremiah 29, 11. But I think it'd be good to look at the whole context of that passage, understand what is going on. Jeremiah 29, 10 through 13. This is what the Lord says. When 70 years are completed for Babylon, I will come to you and fulfill my good promise to bring you back to this place. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you, and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Then you will call on me, and come, and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me, and find me, when you seek me with all of your heart." Now first, this passage is talking about a troubling time that's leading up to the fall of Jerusalem and a 70-year captivity. Uh, people were worried, but God had this promise that He would preserve them and take care of them. He would bring them out of that 70 years of captivity and restore the nation. If you notice after verse 11, we see that God is desiring a relationship with the people. He is calling them to come and seek Him, to pray to Him. And I think that is, really changes the meaning of that prosperity there. That this isn't merely just physical prosperity that He's speaking with them, but a spiritual prosperity. This is the type of prosperity gospel that should be preached. That prosperity is that relationship with God. Knowing that this promise comes in the context of a crisis, you know, it reminds me of a political saying that I've heard. Never let a good crisis go to waste. And I think in the context of Jeremiah, that is very important. Never let a good crisis in your life go to waste. Use it to grow closer to God. So today as we pray, let's pray that we continue to pursue God and grow a closer relationship with Him. Let's also pray for a revival that churches around the country and around the world are revitalized and come back to life. And that that love of God just starts flowing out from them more and more. And not only that, also pray for an awakening that these churches as they're overflowing with the love of God that they go out into their neighbors. They go out to their neighborhoods and seek out people to share with them the good news of Jesus Christ, that more may come to know Him. So will you please pray with me? Lord, I thank you for this time that we could come together and worship you and worship you even in the crisis. Lord, 20 years ago, America had a wake-up call. And at times I'm unsure if we actually answered the wake-up call or just rolled over and fell back asleep. But Lord, I pray, you do not let us slumber long. Lord, for each of us, help us to pursue you closer, to grow closer to you, to love you more day by day. Lord, I also pray for revival, that you can revitalize the church, that believers across the country and around the world will wake up and learn to love you more and share with you, share with others about you. And Lord, I also pray for an awakening that as the church goes out into their communities and sharing that hearts will be receptive, that they, these people who don't know you can come to know you, come to salvation. 
Lord, we thank you for this day that we can come together and worship you. These things we pray. Amen.